Hi, welcome back uh, to what is the fourth in a series of videos. If all goes well, I'm teaching you how to build a buy-to-let empire. That is how to find, fix, rent, and most importantly, repeat, so that you can buy multiple properties from one capital pot and hence build a property empire. Um, right, today, how to write the perfect schedule of works. Um, if you haven't watched the previous videos, perhaps go back and do that. Also, don't forget to subscribe so that you get uh, subsequent videos automatically uh, sent to you. Um, make sure too that you've downloaded all the free giveaways, the sheets, tools, calculators, all sorts of things. So in those videos, it tells you where to get those. Make sure you've got those. Some, some of the things I'm gonna to say today, they kind of rely on them, so you need to do that. Um, if you watch the other videos, you'll be familiar with what we've called the golden formula. Uh, but just to recap, we are looking for a property that's probably gonna be for sale for somewhere between 50 and 150,000 um, pounds. It's probably gonna need a bit of work, it's gonna need renovating. And whatever we think the property is gonna be worth once it's finished, once it's in tip-top condition, I've been using the word tip-top condition, um, you're, you're gonna be spending no more than 80% of that value in tip-top condition on both buying the property and renovating. So for example, if the house is gonna be worth 100,000 pounds, you can only spend 80,000 pounds on buying it and renovating. However that's made up, if it costs 10,000 pounds to renovate it, you can only spend 70,000 pounds on buying it. That is the golden formula. And like any mathematical formula, it doesn't work if you take one of the pieces out. Um, we agreed very early on in this video series we don't bend the rules, we don't bend the numbers. It doesn't work if one of the bits isn't right. So we're gonna keep, we've, we've got four numbers to consider and they're all very, very equally important. So the four numbers are the end valuation, what the property is gonna be worth in tip top condition, the cost of the renovation, um, the rent, is, as the rent's almost a tick box exercise. It either is or isn't gonna to, going to meet it. Sometimes there's very little you can do within certain parameters to move that. And then that gives you the purchase price. We don't, we work out what the purchase price can be from, from those th other three. So the important thing to remember is you can't consider any of them without knowing all of them. So you must get very clear on all of those. Um, so when it comes to the cost of the renovation, there are two ways you can influence the cost of the renovation. The first is, um, the first way to reduce the costs, perhaps more accurately, here is it, more accurately to control the costs is to get the right list of works. And we call that the schedule of works. That's what I'm gonna cover in this video. Um, you could do too much work, you could do too little work, um, you could do the wrong work, and you can see how all of those things could cost you money. Uh, the second way to reduce cost is to get that list at a different price. You, know, you can take your list of works, your schedule of works to three different builders and get three different quotes. So today we're gonna to cover off getting the right list, and then in another video we're gonna say, how can we get this list for the right price? It's worth mentioning now, you should already have downloaded your viewing tools and watched a video on how to use them. Um, using those tools, exactly like I said in the video, you will genuinely, it's not an exaggeration at all, we know that we buy 50% uh, more houses, half of all of our houses come from using the viewing tools in the way that we say, by uh, storing up the documents, going and repeating offers and, and, and whatnot, but also yeah, making sure you've got all the documents there so you're able to do that later down the line. If you haven't watched those videos, go back and do it now, because I'm assuming that you have to carry on from here, okay? Um, I also, I, I recorded a video um, where I went back to back through three viewings of houses. Uh, I think it'd be really good if you watch that as well. So I'm, I'm, there's gonna be no substitute for actually going through a property. So I'm gonna put that a little bit later on. I'll do the, put, put a link in there for as well. So uh, I know it's a lot of videos to watch. Um, I didn't say this was gonna be easy though. Uh, after you've done a, a viewing of a property, I'm gonna assume that you've watched all these and you've got all this on the desktop. After you've done a viewing of a property, you're gonna bring it all back to your desk and um, have all the pictures, the viewing tools sat here on, on a desk and be able to calculate your, uh, your your offer. So I'm assuming you've got all those things at that point. You might need to go and watch a few more videos to get that point. So the big mistake that I see lots of uh, investors making is simply paying too much for the renovation. Um, it will kill in any deal. In fact, the biggest reason I think that most people can't find deals is because they assume or think or work out or calculate that a, a renovation is gonna cost more than it really does. Um, we need to bring the cost of the renovations down. Deals don't stack if you spend too much, it's as simple as that. 
Uh, I also see the same investors, conversely, weirdly, um, not spending enough money on certain areas, you know, um, central heating, damp eradication, um, electrical safety, those kind of things. And that's going to store up problems for the future as well. So you're going to have to be really, really careful. And that's why it's very important that we have a very nice indeed, a trusty, trusty clipboard again, um, a detailed schedule of works. That's what I'm going to teach you to do now. So like I say, um, two ways to control costs, get the right list of works, then find the right build with the list of works. Concentrate on getting this list of works done right, but it's got to be the right list. No ambiguity in there, that can cost money as well. Not overly heavy, not overly light. So there's an art to it, okay? Uh, if you think about it, every schedule of works um, starts with an imp implied level of fit and finish. We are buying a house that is substandard. Um, and we need to bring it to a standard. So we need to know what that standard is. You need to get really clear on what your standard is. Um, in fact, you need to know that standard every time you're viewing a property really, because as you're going around, you need to be considering that. Just remember, and we'll come on to this a little bit later, this is not an exercise in interior decoration. So um, yeah, we'll, we'll come on to what that standard is a little bit later on, but a schedule works is simply a list of things to bring the property you've stood in there up to your standard okay so you start outside the property like we said on the viewing sheet you take a picture of the front door and you the the, the roof and the gutters and the lintels over the windows the brickwork the, um the, i went I, on that video i went through quite a lot of detail in there so do watch the video i'll, I'll re-put the links in as well um you do the front and the rear yards the gardens then we go inside and i always walk up upstairs as far away from the front door as possible so the top rear bedroom and I do that a um, couple of reasons first of all when if a viewing is ever really busy and sometimes we do viewings with multiple people most people start in the kitchen so if you start upstairs you get a bit more time uh, the main reason I guess is um, builders generally should finish a job that way so if you're meeting a builder go upstairs and work your way down that's the way that a house should be finished and you checking off a, a job midway through with a builder all start in the same room, come back down. Just keeps things, it's a nice logical order. I like things in a logical order. So, um, so standing in any room, now we're standing in the top back bedroom, um, we start writing a schedule of works and any room can be broken down into seven key elements. So just remember these seven key elements. I stand in a room with my notepad on my, chip, on, on my clipboard. I'd make a note of which room I'm in and you've got to be careful with that as well you know back bedroom maybe the two back bedrooms back ref, left hand right hand bedroom make sure you know actually what you're talking about it sounds silly but you know you come back you view three houses that day and uh, you don't know which one's which so take your time like i said in those viewing sheets take your time to write things down properly um and then think about those seven things the first two are very easy um i'm, I'm assuming that i'm going to decorate and i'm assuming i'm putting in new flooring carpets or whatever that is so um i have a price for decorating and i have a price for a carpet let's say decorating would be uh um 300 pounds and carpet would be 125 pounds let's say um figures out i've, I've almost thin air there um it could be that all five of the other seven elements are zero. Maybe there's nothing else to do in that room. Maybe it is just decorating and carpets, in which case you move on to the next room. It's unlikely. Um, I then go through this checklist, the, the other five things. Uh, the first thing is the ceilings and walls themselves. Okay, you're going to decorate them, but do they need any work before you decorate them? Do they need uh, replastering or some wallpaper sticking back? Or do they need a hole filling in or whatever it is? And you need to make a note of that. And then put a, a little plus next to it so let's say i need to do a little bit of patchery plastering around a window i'm going to put on another hundred pounds for that put it on as a, as a line item there um, do you need to take off any polystyrene ceiling tiles you should always it's a fire hazard not to again how much would you charge to do that quite often it's easier to overboard a ceiling that way take them down and then overboard the ceiling that's quite often the way to deal with that one um, by the way also i avoid stripping wallpaper if at all possible you know you can yeah, perfectly acceptable to repaint over wallpaper as long as it's stuck back. Uh, uh, fine, yeah, we, we quite often would lining paper on a, a wall rather than replaster anyway. So if the wallpaper's good, you can stick it back, you can paint over the top. And as long as you put decorator's cork crown and um, good quality paint on there, it should look all right. If it's not going to look all right, don't do it. And you might have to strip back, but uh, don't always be looking for, you know, extra work because extra work costs money, of course, and it's unnecessary. Um, so the next item is joinery. Uh, is there any joinery work that needs doing? Skirting boards, architraves, 
Um, are the floorboards okay? Open and close the doors. Do they close? Do you need to ease and adjust the door? Or repair something if you if you can. So if you put on the scheduler works ease and adjust the door, um, that's preferable to changing the door. Um, if it needs changing, it needs changing. If you write ease and adjust the door and then the builder comes to you later on and says, you, we can't do that, we've got to replace it, we've got a way to deal with that, and I'll talk to you about that later on as well, but write down the, the bare minimum work actually, uh, but still taking it to that decent and safe standard. Uh, the next item is the windows. You know, do the windows open and close properly? Are the door handles there? Are the key locks on them? A double glazing pane it sometimes can have condensation in it and it can be blown. Um, you, you could very easily replace those, just the glass as opposed to the whole window, and it's always preferable to replace up to the point where you think it's just not economic to replace this. You know, we're replacing a handle, a, a, a hinge, and three panes. You might as well put a new window in, for example. Um, but yeah, repair, replace is always preferable if you if you can. Um, the next is the central heating. The radiator's in there. Um, is there a radiator in there? Uh, does it look like it's serviceable? Touch it. Is it warm if, if the house is occupied or, or, or you can put the heating on when you get in there? And finally, it's the electrical work. Yeah, maybe it is just cleaning the face, face plates, um, but maybe one needs changing. Maybe you need a new light pendant. Maybe you need to move a socket. Maybe you need to put an extra socket. All bedrooms will need at least two double sockets over a certain size. It will need three. A living room will need three. A kitchen will need, I think it's four, but it depends on the size of it actually. Um, and it's probably preferable to have six, a low level and all sorts for, for, for the fridge and the washing machine. Um, so decide on your own standards there and just check, has it got enough? No, add them in all on um, a jotting down piece of paper. It doesn't need to be typed up and written down at this stage. It's just each room line by line what is the extra work and you're going through the property in a really methodical order so in every room it is walls and ceiling repairs to making good joinery windows plumbing heating uh, electrical works fit new carpet and decorate they are the seven things you've already done the roof the exterior walls, the front and the rear yard, yard before you even go in. Um, there are only two other types of rooms, it's the kitchen and the bathroom of course, and we have a very standard fit and finish for a kitchen and for a bathroom, and we've got a standard price for fitting. You know, three, worked, three, three units, a built under oven housing unit, um, a kitchen sink unit, the sink itself, taps, hob, oven and hood. All in one price. Well, I think at the moment it's about two and a half thousand pounds, including fitting and tiles and things. And if that sounds a bit sporty, you know, of course you can spend ten thousand pounds on a kitchen. You really need to dig into the detail. I'll come to that in a minute, actually. We've also got a standard price for a bathroom. For um, we also fit a bath in a family home. You shouldn't just fit a shower in a, in a family home. Um, tiling, new toilet, new sink, and flooring. We also fit we also fit tiles to. Um, the kitchen floor and the bathroom floor they just last longer and the price for the bathroom has to include overboarding any wooden floor to make it solid so you can put tiles on on, on there um, on there one of the areas we have to pay particular attention to detail on it's in our standard schedule works is how you fit the shower over the bath um, if a house is going to have a leak in it nine times out of ten that's a, that, I've kind of made that figure up but I bet I'll be pretty accurate it's going to be around around the shower or the bath area you know coming down leaking through the ceiling so you've got to pay particular attention to that our standard decoration is always a bit of a, a, a debate our standard decoration is magnolia walls uh, white gloss work and um, a, like a coca-cola colored carpet some people like to put uh, white walls and ceilings and put like a gray carpet in. i know we've done that in the past some of my works managers like to do that as well um, I, I really don't care either way both are neutral and acceptable to me so don't get hung up on the exact like I said, it's not an interior designing uh, exercise knowing the standard specification for everything is very important um, that's what i'm trying to get across you refine it and put it into the schedule of works um, at the point when you're sat at your desk. So you'll, you'll, you'll be viewing, knowing roughly where you're going, making the notes with this in mind, and then you put it all into a, a, a typed up, and it should be typed up, I think, schedule of works um, to get a costing before you put your offer in to buy. Because there's no way of offering unless you know how much it's going to cost. Uh, so finally, here are some tips on actually creating the schedule of works. So first of all, aim for a turnkey schedule of works. Give one person a key and then give the key back. Get them to do everything. And if something isn't on the schedule of works, you're doing it. So make sure it is. Even if it's something, uh, well, so I'm trying to think of something. Keys in windows and uh, door stops behind doors to stop them banging into the doors. If you don't write them on the schedule of works, they won't get fitted. 
if, if you do write them on, nobody's going to charge you any extra. They might charge you five quid. Um, but if you don't do it, on the, don't write it down the schedule works, you'll be left doing it or it won't get done. And that's the kind of thing that can cause damage. So make sure it is absolutely you know, com comprehensive. Give somebody the key and you get them back. So um, And get, get the builder to do everything. Anything that's not on there, you'll be doing yourself. I, I like to get the builder to do... Um, the um, electrical work and the plumbing work as well. You get their subcontractors in. The only exception to that might be windows and roof because they can take a little bit more of a lead time. You've got the opportunity maybe to get a better price. Plus, it's going to make the property watertight uh, or to get the roof fixed and windows make a mess and that should be done well ahead of the builder getting in there and thinking about plastering. So the only exception to the turnkey thing is perhaps windows and roofing, which you can organize separately before the builder gets in perhaps. Uh, next thing, you should choose all the touch items. So by that, I mean your yeah, uh, tiles, carpets, the kitchen, um, the actual you know, the cabinets, the paint. You don't care what brand of adhesive they use or what type of nails they use, but you do care what tiles they use because you want it to look right and you need to specify those things. Don't supply anything. Just specify at a price. I want XYZ tile and they cost £10 a square metre. Go buy them from here. To the builder, they were going to buy tiles anyway. They now know how much they are and they're going to fit those tiles. But if you supply them, you know, I'll send three boxes of those tiles, the builder opens up a tile and it's the wrong tile or it's broken, you're in the firing line to take it back and replace it and whatnot. And any delays, they fall on you. Don't do that. I'm not saying supply any materials. I'm saying specify the materials. It's a different thing. Um, next. I've said it three times now, it's not an exercise in interior design. Um, in fact, actually, if you put your stamp on things, put your stamp on things, you're just as likely to put people off. Um, you're aiming for something neutral. And how do you determine what that is? There's a really, really easy way. And that's the point. Go to any of the big chains, B&Q, Homebase, Wix, Howden's, whatever. Pick up their catalogue and they employ people to work out what's the most common and easiest, most neutral um, setup or, or, or look, if you like. The weird black and purple kitchen with a gold worktop is available. It's right at the back of the catalogue. The one on the front page, white kitchen, white tiles, a few tasteful accessories, that's the one that most people want. That's why it's on the front of the catalogue. Take it, look through the list, it'll tell you what everything is. Just copy it. Don't go any further than that. It is a neutral kitchen, and it is plain to see on any high street, big brand warehouse, DNR, DIY warehouse catalogue. So take advantage of that. Um, so you're getting the picture. It's quite a big job to put all this together. When I was scripting this video, and believe it or not, I, I do script this thing, um, I was still thinking there's something missing. You know, I've gone through a lot of stuff there. You might want to rewatch this video. I know I was like, oh, you have to rewatch the video a couple of times. But when I was scripting, I was thinking there's something missing. So um, what I've done is, yeah, to, to help you write up a schedule of works, I think it's going to be really useful if you see one. Um, so I've got a link in the description and it takes you to a page where you can download or I think we email to you. Um, three copies of example schedule of works. This is one of them. I just printed it out. I've got it all ready and I've sent it off now to be uh, uploaded. Um, we also send a link, I said earlier, I referred to it, where I do three viewings. I think it's three viewings in one day. They're, they, they were actually my houses I was buying. And um, I showed you exactly how to do the viewing and start writing things down. So there's something to download, uh, a copy of the schedule of works, and there's a viewing sort of a video showing you how I how I do what what, what we were talking about there so um, it can become a cut and paste exercise you know, it seems a lot of work to get get with straight away but it can become a cut and paste ex exercise because each property becomes you know builds on the last one they're, they're all quite similar so so far in this video series you know where the right type of property is where to find it, how to conduct a viewing, and now how to write a, uh, a schedule of works. Uh, in the next video, I'm gonna show you how to contract with the builder, um, ensure that this schedule of works actually gets built to the right time, cost, and quality. Um, that's the next video. Don't forget to check out the details section of this video. In it, by now, this is the fourth in a video series, uh, but there are two bonuses in the details. Click on the links. The first one to get the viewing sheets and a video on how to use the viewing sheets. And the second link is to get the example schedule works and the video on how to do a, a property viewing as well. So um, 
I think that's it for today. I'll see you in episode five.